welcome to the differentiating point series and case based discussion we will see interesting case of meningioma and even hemangiopericytoma and we will try to differentiate both basing on the imaging features so coming to the first case 52 year female with weakness slurred speech blurred vision seizures and vomitings you can see there is a extra axial iso2 hyperdense lesion noted against the left to front operator lobe convexity the lesion is iso2 hyperintense to gray matter the lesion is also showing intense homogeneous enhancement with adsent dural tail sign and the lesion is also causing adsent significant calvarial changes and hyperostosis of the underlying bone and even there is extra cranial spread with adsent significant soft tissue swelling so this is a classical case of meningioma and likely meningothelial meningioma but in this case on ct it can mimic even subdural hemorrhage if you because of this hyperostosis and even the mr features we can clearly differentiate meningioma from the subdural hemorrhage like appearance so what are the other meningioma mimics are meningioma can mimic subdural hemorrhage in plaque tuberculosis hpc or sft that is hemangiopericytoma or solitary fibrous tumor sarcoidosis lymphoma rosai dorfman or erdin chistas disease glioblastoma or gliosarcoma and even metastasis coming to next case you can see there is a evidence of a extra axial hyperintense lesion which is showing peripheral restricted diffusion on dwa even low on adc and the lesion is typically extra axial with classical csf cleft sign and even the buckling of the cortex and there is a hyperintense rim on flare with central hyperintensity the lesion is predominantly hyperintense on t2 and flare images and subtle areas of blooming on gre noted within the lesion and it is causing displacement of the underlying cortex so this is a type of fibrous or fibroblastic type of meningioma so generally the meningiomas are iso2 hyperintense but if they are hypointense on t2 they we can suspect fibrous or fibroblastic type of meningioma next on mr spectroscopy you can see on, on iv contrast you can see there is intense peripheral enhancement in the capsule and even on the delayed scans you can see intense homogeneous enhancement with adsent classical dural tail sign on mr spectroscopy you can see this is the typical alanine peak which occurs at 1.48 mm ppm so the 1.48 ppm alanine peak is classical for meningioma which can differentiate this from hemangioparasitoma where you can see myoacetal peak so this is alanine peak at 1.48 ppm on mr spectroscopy which favors meningioma next 78 year male with scalp swelling right hemiparesis and seizures you can see there is a extra axial intensely heterogeneous lancing mass lesion even this is crossing the midline there is associated scalp swelling on ct it is seen heterogeneously hyperdense with intense vascularity and multiple feeding vessels and this lesion is also seen extending beyond the bone causing bony erosions and even extending into the adsent scalp tissue so this is typical of extra cranial extension so this has a narrow attachment this is very hyperdense intense vascularity and even typical extra cranial metast extra cranial spread or extra cranial spread into the scalp this it favors hemangiopericytoma so this is a hemangiopericytoma and thanks to dr momen mahmood for contributing this case so next another case 26 year male with history of seizures and previous history of recurrent csvt you can see there is a intense homogeneously enhancing lobular mass lesion this lesion has a narrow dural attachment and it is seen typically mushrooming into the brain so this typical mushroom type of appearance is classical for hemangiopericytoma narrow dural attachment mushrooming type of growth into the brain and even adsent cortex typically favor hemangiopericytoma and this is a torcular type of hemangiopericytoma presenting with recurrent csvt thanks to dr veel nemetala sir for contributing this case next 36 year male with history of seizures and speech disturbances you can see there is a intense ex homogeneously enhancing mass lesion with narrow dural attachment with adsent dural tail sign and this case proved to be solitary fibrous tumor of the dura previously solitary fibrous tumor of the dura and hemangiopericytoma are, are considered different tumors but now according to who classification they are considered as high grade sfts so they are considered as high grade solitary fibrous tumors next we will try to differentiate meningioma from the hemangiopericytoma basic upon the clinical and radiological and other ihc markers 
so location wise they they are common locations but meningioma can present in a varied locations in the brain incidence 15 to 20% whereas hpc has 1% meningioma occur in a higher age group that is fifth decade or greater than 50 years and hemangioperitoma occurs in a younger age group when compared with meningioma meningiomas are common in females whereas hemangioperitoma common in males recurrence is less likely in meningioma it is more likely in hpc metastasis is less likely in meningioma whereas it is extracranial metastasis or systemic metastasis is more common in hpc cellularity it is low when compared to hpc it is highly cellular hpc is highly cellular when compared with meningioma homogeneous dural tail signs are common in meningioma heterogeneous enhancement vascular tumor multiple flow voids and less commonly seen dural tail sign is seen in hpc and calcifications whether it can be somatomatous or sand like calcifications sunburst calcifications globular or dense calcifications are in, seen in meningiomas they are less common in hemangioperitoma effects of un adjacent bone as we have seen in the case previous case that is hyperostosis hyperostosis is very common in meningioma where it is bony erosions are more common in hpc and when coming to the signal intensities uh, generally meningiomas are iso to iso to gray matter and even iso to hyper intense on t2 weighted images generally they don't have a hypo intense signal on t2 weighted images whereas hpc hpc has a classical hypo intense hypo intense signal on t2 weighted images which is called t2 weighted shortening or lengthening which is due to fibrous tissue generally it is not seen in meningioma unless it is a fibrous type or fibroblastic type tumor size is less in meningioma tumor size is more in more in hpc meningioma has a viral wider dural attachment whereas hpc has a narrow dural attachment mushrooming sign is classically seen in hemangioperitoma which is not commonly seen in meningioma and peritumoral edema is more in case of meningioma which is less in case of hemangioperitoma and relative cellular blood volume on perfusion scanning is high for meningioma when compared with other mimics like hpc and coming to mr spectroscopy as we have seen in the previous case high alanine peaks favor meningioma whereas high myo inositol peaks favor hpc flow voids are less common in meningioma they are more common in hemangioperitoma adc values nadc value and intratumoral susceptibility signal intensity which is called itss is lower in meningioma which is higher than meningioma in hpc and coming to ahc markers sst ra 2a ema are positive meningioma whereas stat 6 nab2 stat 6 fusion ald h1 and cd34 are classically seen in hpc or sfts next we will see try to see other few cases which describe the features of meningioma 26 year female with history of loss smell and taste loss of smell and taste blurred vision headache and personality changes you can see there is a extra axial intensely enhancing mass lesion attached to the dura typically in the olfactory groove so this is a classical case of olfactory groove meningioma next 44 year female with history of blurred vision headache memory loss and behavioral disturbances you can see there is a extra axial mass lesion against bilateral frontal lobes iso to hyper intense on t1 showing intense homogeneous enhancement but in the sagittal plane clearly it, you can see this lesion is is not extending into the olfactory groove and typically located in the planum spinodal so this is a classical case of planum spinodal meningioma and sagittal image can differentiate better differentiate planum spinodal meningioma from the olfactory groove meningioma because this is not extending into the olfactory groove next another case 50 year male with history of personality and behavioral disturbances you can see there is a large lobulated lesion attached to the fox and even extending into the bilateral frontal lobes typically in a butterfly fashion and this is seen extending even into the olfactory groove planus pinodal and even abutting the bilateral frontal lobes so this is a large subfrontal meningioma or parafalcine meningioma so we will see the so olfactory groove meningioma planus pinodal meningioma and subfrontal meningioma all can be better differentiated on the sagittal planes than the axial and coronal planes so this is a subfrontal or parafalcine meningioma next 48 year female with history of weakness of left upper and lower limbs in, and seizures you can see densely calcified extraxial lesion against right frontal lobe convexity this is a classical calcified meningioma next 40 year male with history of left hemiplegia and seizures you can see extraxial hyperdense lesion with multiple sand like calcifications this typical description is called sand like calcification which is classically seen in somatomatous meningiomas so this is a type of meningioma with sand like calcification known as somatomatous meningioma 
So other types of calcifications which can be seen in meningiomas are somatous or sand-like calcification, sunburst calcification, globular calcifications, and even dense calcifications. Coming to the next case, you can see there is a classical intense homogeneously enhancing mass lesion in the atrium and occipital lateral ventricle. So this is a case of intraventricular meningioma. Next, 56 year female with history of tinnitus, hair loss in the left ear, imbalance while walking. You can see there is an extragial lesion in the left CP angle and it's showing intense homogeneous enhancement to that sent dural tail sign. So this is a classical case of left CP angle meningioma. Next case, 52 year female with history of right eye, diplopia, nystagmus, ptosis and scissors. You can see there is a intense heterogeneous, intense homogeneously enhancing mass lesion which is seen in the cella, completely infiltrating the cavernous sinus, even infiltrating the cella and even infiltrating the right temporal lobe and orbital apex. So this is a classical case of cellar with paracellar extension in a case of meningioma. Next case, 35 year old female, chronic history of bilateral sensory hearing loss, scissors, weakness of both lower limbs and even post-op and irradiation changes. You can see there are multiple extraxial nodular lesions. You can see these are the multiple extraxial enhancing nodular lesions along the dura. Even there are few post-op changes. There is iso to hyperintense mass lesions also noted in the bilateral CP angles with thickening of this 7th and 8th no complexes. So this is even they are showing intense homogeneous enhancement. So these are the multiple dural based lesions. This is the bilateral CP angle lesions. And even in the spine you can see there are multiple hyperintense lesions which are showing enhancement. And even in the, there is a lesion which is enhancing in the intradural extramedial location on the right side in the cervical spinal cord. And these are the some post irradiation changes. And you can see some tumor like lesion also noted in the cauda equina which is showing peripheral enhancement with associate mild syringohydromelia. So this is a classical case of multiple denatured schwannomas, meningiomas and ependymomas that is neurofibromatosis 2. So syndromic association is also common in meningiomas when compared with hemangiopericytomas. Thanks to Dr. Mohammed A. Boxer for contributing this case. Next, you can see in this case, you can see there is an intense homogeneous enhancing mass lesion typically wrapping around the left optic now and this mimics the tram track sign or tram track appearance. So tram track appearance is classically seen in left optic now meningioma and you can also remember this tram track appearance is also seen in some other radiology entities like bronchiectasis, Strasweber syndrome in brain, tram tracks in pulmonary edema, trolley track appearance in ankylosing spondylitis and recently tram track appearance in mucoid degeneration of PCL. Next case you can see that these are the two patients you can see there is a central feeding artery with multiple feeding arteries radiating from the central feeding artery which is classically giving the spoke wheel appearance and this is also digital subtraction angiography in other patient which is typically giving the central feeding artery with multiple radiating arteries arising from the central feeding artery. So this is a classical case of classical appearance of spoke wheel appearance which is seen in meningiomas and this spoke wheel appearance can be also seen in other entities like angiographic pattern in oncocytoma cavernous hemangioma of the skull, small bowel valvulus, mesenteric carcinoid, focal nodular hyperplasia, even multiple daughter cysts in hydratid cyst and multiple ever enlarged ovaries in ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So you can remember spoke wheel appearance can be also seen in these other radiological conditions. Next here also you can see there is an intense homogeneous enhancing mass lesion with central feeding artery and multiple arteries radiating away from the central feeding artery which are reaching up to the capsule. So this is a typical appearance of sunray appearance. This is sunray or sunburst appearance is seen in meningioma. But the sunray or sunburst appearance in meningioma, meningioma can be also seen in osteosarcoma, ring sarcoma, calvarial hemangioma and rarely fibrous dysplasia. So these are all the references. Thanks to Dr. Veel Nemetala sir, Mohammed A. Bag sir and Mohammed Mahmood sir for contributing these beautiful cases. And I want to thank all my subscribers for supporting my channel please subscribe like comment and share with your colleagues recently my channel has completed thousand subscribers so i want the similar support from all of my subscribers so that i can present beautiful cases with illustrations in my future videos thank you all